In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Misra. And again, as I told you before, that the month of Misra is the last complete month of the Coptic calendar. So we are at the end of the Coptic year. And at the end of the Coptic year, the Church tried to drive our attention to rethink about our relationship with God and how can we benefit out of it. Again, we're still focusing on our Lord Jesus Christ in every reading that we are reading as an example to us while we're reading the Gospel and the Bible at home is to know how to benefit out of it. The first week was about the wicked vine dressers parable and we said that Christ is the vine and we are the branches and whoever abides in Christ will bear fruits and how to abide in Christ we said through prayer, repentance keeping his words and taking from his body and his blood Last week, we said that Christ is the true physician of our souls, our bodies, and our spirit. He is the hope of those who have no hope, and the help of that who have no help, and the harbor of the faint hearted. So, if you feel down, if you, will, if you feel depressed, if you feel there is no hope, there is an hope. And the hope and only hope is in Christ. In today's gospel is the gospel from St. Mark chapter 3. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has built a boat and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can a Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. This is a very good example how to answer those who try to accuse you. Don't answer emotionally. Don't just uh, accuse them back. But keep your peace and try to reasoning with them. As the Lord said. This is a very good example actually for all of us to learn about it. And he continued and said, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Who is Christ here? Hmm? Where is Christ here in this parable? Where is Christ here? Who is Christ? Jesus. Jesus, Amen. Right. Who, who is Christ here in this parable? Hmm. In this parable. Look at the screen. Yeah. The strong man. Which one? We have two strong men here. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Where is Jesus? Which strong man? Who's, sorry? The second strong man. And who is the first strong man? Look to the screen and to eat. You still uh, sleepy from yesterday? <laughs> Ten. No one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. You said Jesus is the second strong man. Who is the first strong man? The devil. Okay. Yes. In this parable, the first strong man was the devil. 
after the devil tempted us through our father Adam and Eve, he had authority over us. He ruled over us. Okay? And this earth became his kingdom. How can God get back his children? He has to bind first the strong man who is devil and get all his goods again from him. And this is what happened on the cross. The Lord defeated the devil, bent him, and release all those who were in hope to paradise. So, he is a strong man. So, what do you think? Do you think that the devil tried to tempt you and he is now ruling after, over something in you? If the devil is bothering you or controlling your mind, your heart, your emotions, your thoughts, your desires, whatever, if the devil is defeating you by any means, call the Lord and let him enter your heart, your mind, your life, and your house. Amazingly, today in the Senate Sorian, the Lord said to Adamon, I will come and enter your house, and your house will be my house. Okay? So, if you let the Lord enter your life, your life will be His life. If you will let the Lord enter your heart, your heart will be His heart. If you will let the Lord enter your mind, your mind will be His mind. And if you will let the Lord enter your room, your room would be his room. And if you let the Lord enter your body, your body would be his body. Because the Lord is the strong man ever. No one can defeat him and no one can stand in front of him. So, nor bad thoughts, bad emotions, whatever the devil can tempt you through, if the Lord enter, it can't be exist anymore because there is no communion between light and darkness and the Lord is the light of the world. <coughs> How about that? Is it a good deal? Sure. Is it a good deal? It's a good deal. If you let the Lord enter your heart and your mind, your life, your house, your body will be His and He will be the ruler and will give you blessings, and will give you peace, and will give you joy, and will give you purity, and all this kind of blessings. So, let us give the Lord this opportunity to rule over us. How can the, role, the Lord enter our house? Call Him, O oh Lord, come unto me. I ask you, my Lord Jesus, to purify my heart, my mind, my, my thoughts. Ask for help, O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, help me. Believe in Him that He is stronger than anyone else. Sometimes we are afraid from the devil. Oh, the devil. Uh, this is an evil man. This is an evil person. This is an evil whatever. Who is stronger here? Alas, don't be afraid. Just call Jesus to enter into your house. Call Him to enter into your life. And he will defeat anyone else, especially the devil. Keep his word in your heart, so his word will comfort you and strengthen you. Meditate on the word of God, so your mind always will get busy of him. The best thing ever to change your life to a good life is to replace every bad thing with a good thing. So every bad word with a good word. Every bad habit was a good habit. Every exchange it. Let Jesus enter. Let Jesus enter into your heart and your life and your mind. Let him enter through his body and his blood. That's why before communion, this is a very nice prayer. 
I hope all of us have a chance to pray it and instead of the devil tempt us to, to talk to one another and share to one another. There is a very nice prayer before communion saying, Oh Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under the roof of my house. What is the roof of my house? My body. Ya Rabbi, 